Head over to Hulu this March, where our new shows and movies will keep you streaming all month long. Catch the award-winning movie, Poor Things, starring Emma Stone, Mark Ruffalo, and Willem Dafoe. Check out the new documentary, Freaknik, The Wildest Party Never Told, about the iconic Atlanta street party. And don't miss FX's Shogun, a reimagining of the epic tale starring Anna Sawai. So, what are you waiting for? Go stream something new on Hulu. Hello guys and welcome once more to this week's episode of Heavy Metal Tones with me your podcast host Tony Evans taking you through the world and wacky world of heavy metal, heavy rock and everything in between. I hope you've had a few good weeks coming up into the spooky season. Um, we've got a great, I've got a great episode lined up next week which has got nothing to do with music so, but it is something to do with spookiness. I hope you're gonna, I'm going to enjoy doing that one. Firstly though, we, this week we're going to talk about a very, I think a little known album a definitely a little known band they sort of loomed large in my history um for some time the band is sabat or sabat um not the japanese one but the british thrash band that produced three albums in the late 80s and early 90s um uh, with mem- band members uh that have now gone on to do many other things all right that is you've got andy sneep on guitar uh, and he wrote most of the music. Uh, he now is a wonderful producer. He also plays lead guitar with Judas Priest. So that's you know pretty interesting um, heritage there. All right. So the band, the album we're going to talk about is their second full length album. I've already talked about their first one, but this is their second one um, called Dreamweaver. Uh, open brackets. Reflections of yes of our of our yesterday's close brackets. So it was uh, released on the 15th of May 1989. It was recorded at Skytrack Studios in Berlin. And it's an unusual album because I'd like to... It's, it is progressive thrash, which is something that I don't know if there's a lot of that around. There may be now, but it wasn't back in 89. Um, it's uh, definitely a, a piece of work that... Um, it has to be listened to, to be honest with you. It's a really important piece of music, possibly the best thrash album Britain ever made. Um, and British didn't make a lot of thrash, to be honest. It's very much a, a European and American sort of phenomena. So British bands, UK, weren't really... They, they were thrash bands then, but this is something completely different. Um, and you're going to find out why. I first come across it uh, when I was... 17, 18, 89, 18. And, um, and I was in Our Price, which is a record store in, in a local shopping centre near me in Brent Cross. In the old days when you would spend your hard-earned money on an album, you had no idea what it sounded like, but you liked the cover, and you thought, well, I'll take a risk on it. Now, this was sitting in um, the discount bin. Now, that's not to say it should be discounted, it's just that when I picked it up, it was being discounted. Um, and I paid like two pound for it, I think on now I got it on cassette originally and um, I took it home popped it in and it was like mind blown <laughs> like you know teenage Tony's mind absolutely blown apart because it was everything that I loved up to then right so it was progressive so it had some it's got a storyline to it. it is a concept album it's phenomenally well made it's got an incredible um uh, time signature changes in it it's very Maiden-esque in that respect it has this beautiful musicianship it's wonderfully recorded and it, it has depth it has so much depth that you can almost drown in it it's incredibly incredibly interesting album now it's not for everyone because um, the lead singer Martin Walker is uh, if I say that if I'm, if I'm sp- sp- saying that right uh, he his voice isn't for everyone. Now, it is a bit of an acquired taste. 
I really, after years of listening to him, can understand what he's saying. You might not at first, because he he does get a million words into the bar. Um, how he does it, I don't know. I watched him live, and I still don't know how he does it. Uh, and with the changes of signature in time, and also the story that he's getting in into this 44-minute album, is was quite amazing. So he, he recorded on the first album, 88, History of a Time to Come, and then Dreamweaver Reflections of Our Yesterday's 89. Uh, it is, I've, I, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of Morning Has Broken, which came out in 91. It's a great album, but it's nothing special. But uh, History of Time to Come and Dreamweaver are just um, that time in, in music when you could do anything and sing anything because of punk, because of um, the freedom of not being on, on major labels all the time. You could do something different. And for me, this album is the antithesis of the British music industry. Um, how they take one form, add it to another, and create something different. Venom did it, took heavy metal, added extremity to it, and made the, the extreme metal genre. It also made a, a classic concept album in, um, you know, at War With Satan. Uh, and people might tell me it's not a concept album but one soul side is one song it's a concept album uh and he very it's very much a british thing I, th I really mean that i think that sincerely um that they we can in in our way intellectualize um everything right it's sort of like taking they take the extreme extremities of life but adding an, an intellectual twist something that doesn't just become um uh what's the word it doesn't just become sort of one-dimensional and um and i don't know i think the word youthful is wrong but one-dimensional is the right word and uh, because a lot of these musicians that come into this genre late, they usually have come, particularly of, uh, of Martin's age and, and Andy's age, they would have come from that either through the punk um, scene where they could, you know, you could do anything, or they come through the progressive scene, um, listening to bands like Maiden, like um, Queensryche, you know, uh, a lot about those sort of bands, um, and in sort of adding. Uh, trying to give him sort of more to the to the uh, listener, not just um, three and a half minutes of extreme extreme music, which you do get in this album. It's, I mean, musically, I mean, I've written some you know, notes here that uh, I think it's uncompromising. It's intelligent. It's detailed. It's textured. It's a uh, <clears throat> phenomenal album. I, I, I'm going to say that quite comfortably that it sits in my. Um, in my top five thrash albums of all time. In fact, I'm going to read you what um, what some people have said about it. Okay, um, this is here uh, a staggering work of total excellence, Kerrang! A seminal chapter in the evolution of British metal and one of the finest metal albums ever made, Metal Hammer. Um, I absolutely think that's correct. I think it's one of those wonderfully hidden beauties that, unless you know it, you're not going to listen to it. And I don't know whether this is as as widely listened to as say you know any of the metal thrash metal albums of the american genre you know um you know any of the slayers and the megadeths and the anthraxes because i think the trouble with it is is it's more intellectual and i think people who want to listen to thrash sometimes just want to to circle pit don't they they just want to um get lost in the speed and the technical ability of the music which you do get with this and and there are moments in it where it just takes your breath away right but it also demands you take some attention particularly listen to the lyric now as i said martin's vocals are not the easiest to hear after a few listens you will get them um, i'd probably recommend listening to history of a time to come first then this uh, so you can get an idea um but once you get it, and that's why Spotify is great because you can read the lyrics, or if you have the vinyl of it, or the, even the CD, if you've got magnifying glass, you can read the lyrics. Um, I've got it on vinyl, and I really love it. And um, 
I think it demands a little bit too much, sometimes a bit more intellectualism, and I think that may have put off some of its audience because it didn't do that well on release, um, sadly. Um, it's based on a book, um, a, on the 1983 book by the British psychologist Brian Bates, The, the uh, War, Way of the Weird, W-Y-R-D, Tales of of an Anglo-Saxon sorcerer. The album demonstrated singer and lyricist Martin Brokey's deep held beliefs in weirdism, Anglo-Saxon spiritualism, Celtic mysticism, and paganism. Musically, the album reflected composer Andy Sneap's predilection at the first, at, at that time for increasingly lengthy and progressively technical thrash songs. Shortly before the album was recorded, former Holoseid guitarist Simon Jones was, was, was recruited into the band as an additional lead and rhythm guitarist. Now, sorry, I read that really badly because I read my handwriting, but anyway, you know. So basically, uh, it's a concept album based on uh, a book from a psychologist, Brian Bates. The lead protagonist's name in the um, is Brand. It's very much like in my opinion, an extreme version of A Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. We're not quite sure what the bloody hell's happening, but we're going to take the, enjoy the journey while we're on it, you know? Um, because, again, as I said, I've listened to this album regularly since I was a young man, and it, even now, like I sat down in the cafe again this morning to just mull over my notes and get my head around the thoughts of the show, I was going to say and even then listening to the album I was like mm, yeah I, this feels different to what I listened to it the first time but I like the open mindedness I mean I came from that you know that, that progressive heritage so um, this was no nothing unusual for me but it was something that really grasped my intellectual um, synapses my, my brain went all over the place with this album um, because, as I said, I bought it on cassette and it had no lyrics with it. I had to sort of guess the lyrics. This is before the internet. So it wasn't till the sort of advent of streaming until I managed to get a copy of on vinyl that I got the lyrics. And they are quite, quite intelligent and very, very interesting and make a good read on their own. Um, I highly recommend you listening to the album, pulling up the lyrics on Spotify and just going through with it because it will give you a... Uh, uh, insight to how good this album is written all right so it's the members of the band so that we don't forget the rest of them okay we've got martin wakir as i said w-a-k w-a-l-k-y-i-e-r if i've said it wrong i'm so sorry andy sneep on lead rhythm and acoustic guitars simon jones on rhythm and lead guitar fraser kraisk on bass and simon negus on drums and percussion it was produced by roy m Ra uh, roland uh, it was um, mixed by Moses Meister, and the artwork was fantastic. Artworks by Tim Beer. Um, I will put you will see the picture of the artwork in the show thumbnail, so you get an idea of it. It is, uh, it's, it, it sums up the album and the feel of the album massively. I got this album again in the same time that I got Black Sabbath's TYR or Tear, and that's also based on sort of Nordic. Um, and uh, um, Germanic uh, Viking and sort of paganism, and it really was of Odin's and stuff mentioned in it. And it, and I, I think at that time I was really going through that phase where I really enjoyed that because uh, my family way back a couple of hundred years are from Germany, my mother's side of the family, and so I sort of quite enjoy that sort of uh, that side of it. Um, now, that's, I've waffled on enough right, about this um, album. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, well, as usual, I'll go and have a break and we'll talk about track by track because there's a very detailed um, notes here that we've made um, for this. But I'd just like to say this, that uh, I think that um, this is the pinnacle I said it before and I'll say it again. You can't stop me, it's my show. This is the pinnacle of British thrash. It really, really is. It's a hidden gem. You can get it now on all streaming platforms. You can even get a copy of it on CD quite easily. Vinyl's a bit harder. Um, there was re-released in 2007, um, which is how I got a copy on vinyl because I couldn't get it before. Um, and 
yeah, it was it's a it's a small release from you know in the history of the metal, it's they're a band that that probably you know even make a blip on the radar sadly, but they are an absolutely brilliant brilliant band. And as I said, don't get the mix up with a Japanese band of the same name. Um, if you want to know what the name means, it actually means it's a witch's um, it's to do with witch witchcraft and 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 worship. Okay, anyway, enough of me. Uh, I've wobbled on, wobbled on, and wobbled on. So let's break into 44 minutes and five seconds of this album on the second half. Uh, do come with me, it's absolutely well worth the journey. Talk to you soon, guys. Bye for now. Welcome back, guys, to part two. Uh, we're going to go track by track with this amazing album, Dreamweaver, um, by Sabat. Now, I always say that, I think I say that wrong. It always sounds like I'm saying it wrong. Is it Sabat or is it Sabbat? I don't, I mean, I'm just, whichever way you want to call it, right? Reflections of Our Yesterdays. As I said, based on the book by Brian Yates, The Way of the Weird, um, which one day I might even anticipate to uh, actually try and read. Um, but hey, you know. So we start off, it's basically uh, only a few tracks in this album because they are um, long numbers. Okay, guys, they, if you're used to long metal numbers, i.e. maiden s kind of lengths, then you're fine. If you, most thrash songs don't last more than three minutes. This is, um, this is a progressive thrash, so it has a lot of um, ups, downs, twists and turns. Um, you know, one minute it's playing at 100 beats a minute, whatever, and next thing suddenly you, you're into a classical piece of music. Then you're in classical, then you're back to thrash, then you're into some um, traditional heavy metal, and then you've got some fiercely fantastic marching um, heavy metal bass-driven rhythm sections. It's uh, it's a it's a masterpiece. That I'm going to say that out loud. Out loud. It, I'm going to put pin my badge on it. I'm going to say it's probably my favorite thrash album of all time. And that's a big call um, because I think I've said before that I, I've put it in my top five, but I'm, you know, on reflection, listening to it the last week or so again, it really has um, got me thinking about it. Now, one of the reasons I chose this album, actually, just so well listening, is that um, after last week's episode, I was listening to again to Deliver Us by uh, Warlord and chatting to Matt about it. Who picked up some really interesting musical notes? I didn't did not pick up in that album at all. So I'm really proud of him. Like it was really it opened my eyes to the way I listened to the album again. And um, a part of it uh, of the album is an acoustic section in it, and it just made me think of Dreamweaver. And I thought, oh, geez, you know what? I haven't talked about that one. So thanks, Matt, uh, for um, giving me that uh, inspiration again. It was wonderful. Now. As I said, it's only a few tracks, so itself it is n in not including the intro and outro, which are only like a minute or thirty seconds long. It is um, six tracks, um, no, sorry, seven tracks. Okay, um, and they all sit around the eight-minute mark. There's a couple of shorter ones. We open with the beginning of the end an intro, where uh, Andy Sneap reads from the book um, and you hear like crows in the background and the bell chiming and it's um, it really pulls you in if you if you enjoy um, creating a, a, a an atmosphere this well, bloody well does it um, it's just a beautiful piece it's 30 seconds well read by him and then bang we're straight into uh, cler the clerical conspiracy Okay, that's the first track. Now, I'm going to read you what it says it's about, okay? The clerical conspiracy sets the scene for the story and the themes to come, introducing us to what, what brand, W-A-T, that is, brand, the Christian missionary from northern England, who a thousand years ago is sent down to southern England to learn about the pagan ways of the southern Anglo-Saxons 
and in doing so determines the best way in which they can be converted to Christianity. Speaking to Kerrang, Walkir explained that in the clerical conspiracy, the monks are talking in the abbey in the north of England, discussing the best way of converting pagans into the su in the south to Christianity. Um, what a, a beginning, right? Straight away, it's got concepts that I absolutely adore. I'm a big, um, big uh, fan or reader of Anglo-Saxon history. I enjoy Middle uh, Middle Ages and and uh, Dark Ages history, and so this is. And also, I'm really quite uh, I'm fond of uh, of theology and the the churches, uh, what the church does and didn't do, right and wrong, in the conversion of pagans to Christianity. So it's really, really sort of sets. It's good for me. It this hits, hits my hits my sweet spot anyway. Um, and the, the song itself, as I said. With what Martin does is when he sings, he he puts a lot of effort into each line of the lyric. Right, it's really it, it's speed. It's very fast. It's probably the fastest thrash vocals you're probably going to hear. Um, there are faster, I think, but it's pretty fast out there. He gets a lot of words and he spits them with real um, with real passion and 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 he really tries hard to put across the emotion. In this, um, this song again, it's it's quite a long track. Um, it's it's five minutes thirty eight. The first one, and it really sets you going. Your heart rate's going. I mean, uh, the the lyric is, um, it's just you know beautiful, really beautiful, right? Well, I think beautiful is probably the wrong word, but it's just really well written. Okay. Um, I mean, you're not going to pick up some of this stuff because of the way he does sing it. Uh, there's a great line here. Still a young fool was I, as my story begins, yet like all fools considered myself to be wise and match for all things. But the lessons I've learned and I've never forgotten, when your teacher is life, then success and survival and failure is death. From early years I saw the world through tunnel vision eyes. My twisted mind philosophized and fossilized, secure in my belief was I assured throughout my life the only things that could sustain me were the words of jesus christ it um you know absolutely i mean it, it gets that in like two lines so i mean this this is the kind of lyric that uh, you just don't expect from a thrash album you really don't um you know um smite the pagans pride we shall take their graven images and grind them into dirt for the men can live in paradise must be the devil's work brothers of the holy order and then he it's basically conversationary because it starts with a conversation with Bran talking and then Epa and then Brothers of the Holy Order and Epa again um, and Bran. It's, it's a, I mean, to sit down and write this it, it, uh, is just something uh, beyond my comprehension, to be honest with you. It's, it's what makes prog really worth, what makes it worth, you know, so makes it so much worth worthy for me it makes me they really enjoy it um and then we move from there that really create and it it turns and changes uh, musically on a on a dime right it does it, you know one minute you, you've got a a nice ascending guitar piece and descending guitar piece suddenly it's you're galloping horse bass drums and and thunderous bass and um you know searing thrash style you know whammy bar solos um, and that's what you get with 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 this album. It's just beautiful. Then we come into uh, Advent of Insanity. Now, Advent of Insanity is uh, is a really it's a, it's a, like it's all of a sudden we we'll, we'll have a quiet moment. We better we'll have an easier moment, right? It's clean vocals. It's the only time on the album you can really get to grips with Martin's voice. Um, it's beautiful acoustic guitar background. Um, the lyrics are a sea breeze echoes softly its song echoes through your mind leaves you thinking of tomorrow and the life you left behind come turn your head to face the wind and that fills the enchanted sails and drives you to your destiny a silent sil siren's wail it's, it's beautiful right and I'll read you what the song is about okay it says here having uh, accepted the quest what brand sets sail for the south of England via the coast and according to Martin Advent of Sanity depicts the thoughts during the journey, thinking about what he left behind and the perils that face him in the future. Did he do the right thing? 
right? Did it do the right thing? Yeah, that's just, it's just, yeah, just absolutely fantastic. Um, bit of soul searching um, sitting there. It's, and again, it's one of my favorite tracks on the album because it is a breath of fresh air. It does take, it's only two minutes and, hang on, let me see this, two minutes and 27 seconds long. But it takes a bit of a, it takes you a bit of a happy because the first one it takes you so much out of you emotionally that when you listen to it you do need a little bit of a, of a reprieve. Unfortunately, this is the only real reprieve you get on the entire album because um, it doesn't get any less frantic from here. And then after that, we we march on to possibly the best song on the album, and for me, possibly one of the best thrash songs um, ever made. Uh, and it is Do Dark Horses Dream of Nightmares um, I'll read you what he says it's about okay Martin says Do Dark Horses Dream of Nightmares what brand has arrived at the south and whilst waiting for these prearranged guy to arrive falls asleep during which he uh, falls prey to nightmares during which he, the pagan spirits take make first contact with him according to Ma Martin the spirits using this contact uh, sorry uh the spirits using this contact to try to work out whether he is trying to destroy the old gods to impose a new religion upon them. Explaining that the title of the song, one of the spirits meets his black horse's head on a totem pole in a clearing of the, in the forest. Uh, it's got magnificent time changes. It is eight minutes long. It is a song that you could take off the album without being into the separate. You could release it, not that it was ever released as a single, but you could release it as a single and it would, um, it would just be, it's crazy. It, it sits along with me, and this is a big call, guys, because if you all know me, it sits along with Rhyme and the Ancient Mariner uh, as one of the most um, epic and impressive prog metal songs of them all. It is just phenomenal. Um, it, it, it's probably the best thrash song outside of the big four so outside the american big four you know metallica megadeth anthrax and slayer i think it is um solely the best track on the album firstly and a piece of of um of genius it really really is i'll i'll read you some of the lyric from it okay let's see what we got opening up here Standing on a strange shore, this desolate, desolate coastline, it offers cold comfort. Very little more than the sky for a blanket. The earth for my bed. The sisters of weird, threats upon the loom of life, have forbade, for, foreordained your coming here. So weep not mankind of mankind. Dry your worthless puppet eyes, tears, and answered questions, how they play on my mind, now that darkness is falling, and still there's no sign of my guide. I mean... I mean, how, I mean, I can barely say that, and I'm reading it off a page. I don't know how he's singing um, songs like "Man, Manningkind and Mankind" and um, "Worthless Puppet Tears" and "Foreordained Thread." Uh, it's just incredible, and it. it um, so I got a bit of a sniffle today. Um, it's. There's a lovely bit in it where it does where the lyric goes flying so high on the wings of a dream over mountain and forest, cross river and stream, whilst the creatures that feed off the doubts I invent await for my arrival with evil intent. And I, when I saw them live, and they, they he spat that out um, at us, it was just like it really is a brilliant, brilliant. There's a wonderful bit in the chorus where he goes, "Welcome, welcome to my domain." I've been bunning my time, watching, waiting, but now you're mine, weaving the web that entwines you, like a puppet you play on the end. It's just, yeah. I mean, I, I, if you wrote these lyrics into a book, it'd make a fantastic book of poetry, right? That's, I can't say much more about how amazing that particular song is. So do Dark Horse's Dream of Nightmares. Um, yeah. I'm going to whack lyrical on it, but it has amazing twists and turns. It's got one of the hardest thrash sounds um, that you'll ever hear. 
It really is. I think it's. The, I think it gets hard, heavier and harder than anything Slayer ever did. And, and people think, look at me, might look at me through your your iPhone or your laptop and go, "We're talking about Tony, you idiot." Thrash the Slayer is the heaviest. No, I don't think it's so. I think do Dark Horse's Dream of Nightmares is, is um, the reason it's heavier and harder. It's not the amount of notes in the bar or how loud it's recorded or the screeching solos or the it's just the rhythm the rhythms in this Andy and um, sorry Andy and and, uh, and Simon put together are just brutal it's it's probably why he fit Andy fits so well in uh, in Judas Priest to be honest because it's not about a million notes with Priest either is it we know that it's about the it's, the, it's what I call the Tony Iommi uh, theory. It's it's not the amount of notes. It's it's the it's the riffage, right? Uh, everyone should have their riffage. It's good for them, right? <laughs> um, it's just brilliant riffage. Really, really thunderous. I I don't know what I could say really. That's it. I can't say much more. Uh, you just you just need to go and listen to it personally. And then we go we get to best of enemies. Um. I've written something here, I don't know why I wrote this, but I wrote um, ascending and descending chords uh, that just, just make a uh, palm muted triplets on it, I've written, which makes metal just what it is for me. It sums it up completely. It's probably one of the albums, this is probably one of the albums where I fell really head first for the genre, for the musical form um, as a young man, to be honest with you. Uh, it's. Uh, yeah, it's just wonderful. I'll read you what it means, what he's written about it. So, in The Best of Enemies, the morning after his nightmare, Bran finally meets his guide, Wolf, WLF, who tells him of the pagan ways and starts to rebuke the, his Christian ideas. Martin told Metal Forces magazine that Wolf tends, tells Bran that if he really wants to learn, that he can't just tell him about the spirits in the spirit world. He has to encounter them for himself. He has to meet the spirits face to face. He says that spirits will give him all the knowledge he wants, but only if he has the conviction of thought with it. He has to actually risk his own death in meeting the spirits. Martin told Kerrang that Bran thinks that Wolf is going to show him around, but Wolf is actually a shaman priest. Um, but what else can I say? Actually, again, one of my favourite uh, choruses is in this. Oops, I've hit the mic. Is in this this particular track, "Best of Enemies." Um, hang on, let me just get the lyric up. On instrument of God force, fed on ignorance and lies, so blind and narrow minded that you cannot compromise. Even the most foolish thief should know what he is taking, the least if he find himself within a cage of his own making. The ways of weird on many end, our path we must decide, for the secrets that you seek are all around you. Use your eyes. Just brilliant. You know, absolutely brilliant. Um, and then the way he spits out Best of Enemies um, in the vocal line, it's just... I mean, I can't go for all the lyric. I mean, this lyric is, again, it's eight minutes long and not one chorus, not one piece of it repeats itself. Right at the end, it's brilliant. It says, the error of its way and in the future's glimpse, reflections of our yesterdays drawn to the spirits like moths to a flame. When there is no risk, there can be no, ba no gain. Ah, oh, just brilliant. Uh, again, um, everything that Thrash could be and should be, uh, and unfortunately I don't think will ever be again uh, like this album. I really cannot um, enthuse highly, more highly about it, really. Uh, uh, once that, you think, oh, God, I've really, I've come into, the, I'm coming to this, I'm, I'm, I'm almost there, I'm getting there. And then we have the next track, How Have the Mighty Fallen? This is the closest traditional thrash on the album, I think. Oh, well, let's say traditional thrash, uh, big four thrash, right? What it says is, Told from the perspective of the spirits, How the Mighty Have Fallen describes Bran's first real meeting with the spirits and makes plain their intention to fight for their survival, notwithstanding the threat of their imminent replacement by Christianity. In his interview with Metal Forces, Martin said, Having been told of the perceptions he must undergo before meeting the spirits, Bran 
deviates from his from this with the result that the spirits come too soon. Martin explained to Kerrang that at the end of the song they steal Bran's soul and he has no he has to prepare himself for a journey into the spirit world to reclaim it. Martin started that he Brand has two days in which to recover his soul for his life force to, before his life force will ebb out. It's so it's so Lamb lies down on Broadway. It's so Genesis. I, I, I'd love to know whether Martin and, and um, Andy are Genesis fans, but this is so. You could put this on after Lamb lies down on Broadway. Yes, it's not the same kind of musical form, and you might shock you with the extremity of it if you're not into this sort of stuff. Um, but it's just. It's just so deliciously intellectual, but without, with also so entertaining. And it's one of my favourite, um, one of my favourites. I mean, they're all favourites. Well, have you heard that? I mean, nothing on the album's weak. It's all killer, not filler, right? Um, and the lyric for, I'll just grab some of the lyrics of this this particular one. Okay, um, let's have a go here. Denizens of sylvan places hidden from the eyes of man, courtesans with sylph-like graces, Dancing to the pipes of Pan that echoed through the ether, notes that sound the wings of Halcyon, songs to give your our life the meaning that we lack. Now they have gone. Watch the pattern ever changing in the tapestry of fate, weft and weave and interlacing silken strands that fabricate a cloak to fit both king and beggar, those that rule those and those that toil. All are equal in the fact. All pay homage to the mortal coil. God, man's genius. Now, it might be taken from the book, but to get it into verse and to sing it, again, um, and this is the only criticism, I would love to hear that lyric sung at a slightly slower pace um, so I could really take it in. But that is Martin's style, it is the band's style, and that's what made them who they are. So let's not, let's not go there. But that is the only one, if I've got to be one criticism, that would be it. And then move on to Wildfire. Now, Wildfire says, uh, Wildfire, Brand journeys into the spirit world. Uh, Martin told Kerrang that the title is a reference to Brand's naked dance with two, two fires called Wildfires. And you feel it. You feel it in this song. This isn't a, a particularly long song. Uh, Wildfire is only um, four minutes and 39. Uh, it doesn't hang around too much, but you feel the pagan wantonness, the... The, the letting go of uh, of traditional concept concepts of religion that that, um, that the, the main character has carried with him all his life, the 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 sort the feeling that he could be liberated and free, um, and that's what you get from this. In thoughts from visions of the night, when deep sleep fell felleth out of sight, many a strange thing will you dream. So thoughts is never what it seems. Awaken from my troubled sleep where dreams once lost as nightmares creep. To steal my soul and suffocate what sanity remains. My anger mute, my anguish blind within the sad fragment of my mind. Ah, oh, God. Yeah. You know, and you feel it. It's only a short song, but the, the music itself is really beautifully finished. It's not the heaviest song on the album. Um, but it does give you a little bit of relief. I did say that there wasn't much relief after um, the second track, but this one does give you a little bit. All right, a little bit. But what a great lyric! What a wonderful thought. This man is drawn between um, the hard linear walls and the stony concepts of of um, Christianity, where it's very black and white, to the seasonal changes and the heathenistic. Um, paganism of the original um, land owners of the United Kingdom the, you know the the Angles and the Saxons um, it's pretty amazing at how uh, this man's journey has taken him and it was a, then a thousand years ago more than a thousand years ago is now would be a long journey from one end of the country to the other people didn't travel that far and to suddenly see a uh, different way of life that he may actually really want to live because it's free and it's it's guilt free in some respects you know it isn't you're not trapped within the 
the concepts of Christianity. Not there's anything wrong with that. I'm just going to say that, you know, in his mind anyway. Okay. And then we come to the very final track on the album um, called My This Story. Okay. And what he says about it is, in My This Story, a described by, as described by Martin to Metal Forces, Brand encounters his own soul, which is a woman. He doesn't know that he has met his own soul and tells the woman he has come to learn the way of the weird and the power of nature. She tells him to look at no further, for she is his. Hang on, sorry, for she is his soul, and on returning to the material world, he will know not every, anything he wanted to know. To Kerrang, Martin elaborated that his soul explains the way of the weird to him, everything that he wanted to know. Thus, his mission to convert the pagans has become instead a voyage of self-discovery. Fantastic! What a good allegory about heading out with one defined idea rigid and immutable um, then to be are your eyes open to a, a more a more different and interesting way of life I think that's an allegory for a lot of us um, a lot of a lot of us come to the world given our religion at birth by our parents with no choice just given to you that is what happens and then later in life you either um, repel and find your own path or you stay and do this and repeat the same old history with your own children um, I myself um, are the latter I, I was born with one and um, and have moved towards another uh, later in life and I think that that's uh, it, it's and it's this album this is what this album is about this is why I really truly love this album a musically it's just a masterpiece musically but um just has this soul to it more than anything i could possibly um really point to in, in its in its in genre so the last song let's get back to the last get some of the lyric on the last one it's not actually the last track on the album but it's the last major song and let's just get that up I'm standing at the crossroads of my life, nothing to lose. Each path leads to oblivion, which one will I choose? Rising on the ashes of my plight, I traverse f filaments of light that permeate my eth eth ethereal form. On ob oh, sorry, oh, God, man, sorry, put my teeth in. On omnipotent threads, I'm born. Imagine trying to sing that one. Um, unto place where I can find a balm of ease, my troubled mind. That my, my glimpse things you yet unseen, a world not grey but evergreen. Then can you blame me in such a crime to crave for one small piece of heaven that I can call mine? It's just wonderful. See, what he's saying is it's not black and white. You know, it, you, you're told it's black and white, but it isn't. There are many hues. There are a plethora. Do I have a plethora of colours? You have a plethora. And. Uh, that's what I take away from this album. That's what I've taken away from it from the last for the last. Well, I got it when I was I said that in '89, so quite some time now. This album has lived with me, and it's the same with "Lamb Lies Down on Broadway." Um, it's the same with uh, "Close to the Edge" by Yes. It's the same with Marillion's um, a "Script for Jester's Tear." Um, you know, any of those sort of deep albums that have sort of sat with me. Uh, Clutching at Straws by Marillion as well. Um, as I said, Rhyme the Ancient Mariner. You know, these songs are just meaning, deepful, deep and meaningful to me. And yeah, there is times in the world for your music to be entertaining. There is times in the music to be in the background. There are times in the music just to, to bloody well enjoy yourself. And some albums do all of that in one go. They intellectualize you. They give you sucker. They give you uh, a place to hide in the umbrella of their rhythms, and they also give you a, a place to escape from, to escape from reality. And everyone knows me, or meets me, or knows me that I'm very not very far away from my headphones. I've either got them on with one ear to the side so I can hear people talking to me, or I'm listening to something. It's not because I'm afraid of the world, people. It's not because I don't like reality I just 
my soundtrack to the world is music, right? Some people's it's the sound of nature, some people's the sound of motor cars, some people's the sound of laughter and children. For me, it's it's music in all forms. And because I'm so connected to the musical form, music itself, I do need to get more from it. And this is the kind of album that gives me more. And that's why I like progressive rock, because it gives me more. Um, it gives me more to listen to and, and think about. Um, that's me jibber jabbering on. I really do hope you enjoyed this album. It does end, sorry, with a with Martin Heap again in Happy Never After. It'll outro one minute and two again. Um, it's just his beautiful um, voice, and he has got a beautiful voice. Uh, finishing the story, I want you to listen to the album. I want you to maybe even read up about um, weird. Um, W-I-R-D as I said um, it might be something you might be interested in uh, it's It's a fantastic fantastic lost album and I really wish it wasn't I really wish it was more on more people's listening list I'm sure people out there who are listening to the show have heard it but not are listening to it and all, or they've come to the show for the first time because they've seen the title um, and go yeah Tone I get it I really do if you don't you've never heard it um Step outside your comfort zone if you're not into this kind of metal, and you don't, and, and try it. Uh, it's nothing like a guttural, thrash, you know, dark black metal vocally. It's just very fast, and sometimes Martin does get tries to cram too many words into the line, and you can sometimes hear him get lost in its vocal delivery. But if you allow him that and read the lyric and allow him to tell his story uh, or them to tell their story, you will be very, very um, I think you'll be very charmed by it. I know I am. Um, and it just, yeah, makes me smile. Anyway, that's enough for me this week. Um, have a good one. I said next week is gonna, gonna won't be music related. It's going to be something around Halloween. Um, I won't tell you what it is, but I'll give you that time to, to think about it. Anyway, ask me for this week. Um, do come and um, hear me on all platforms. I'd love a, some reviews. I've got very few reviews, um, sadly. Uh, the more reviews I get, good or bad, the more that the world sees me. So those that are listening that I've listened week after week, if you could jump on Spotify, give me a five-star rating or a four-star, three-star. I don't give a crap, really. One to five. Obviously, five would be better. Um, if you're on YouTube, give me come and give me a review. If you're on um, iTunes, come and give me a review. Uh it doesn't matter what it is i just need interaction um the show is spreading hugely fast and it's doing really well but i could always do a bit with a bit more um, if you like the show come and do leave me a a review anyway that's enough begging um <laughs> from me do enjoy the show uh do listen do this is the album and uh, i'll chat to you soon bye for now guys ta-ta Botox Cosmetic, out of botulinum toxin A, FDA approved for over 20 years. So, talk to your specialist to see if Botox Cosmetic is right for you. For full prescribing information, including boxed warning, visit BotoxCosmetic.com or call 877-351-0300. Remember to ask for Botox Cosmetic by name. To see for yourself and learn more, visit BotoxCosmetic.com. That's BotoxCosmetic.com.